Did you know that your nails, skin, and even strange food cravings can reveal signs of iron deficiency? And I see people with iron deficiency every single day in the hospital. And more often than you might think, this can be the first clue that helps me diagnose colon cancer. I'm gonna show you the top 14 signs of iron deficiency so that you can spot them yourself. Because picking up on these early clues could truly save your life. Let's start with one of the most classic signs of iron deficiency, pallor which just means that your skin or mucous membranes look more pale than usual. Here's why this happens. Your red blood cells are packed full of hemoglobin, a protein that gives red blood cells their color and their ability to carry oxygen. Iron is right at the center of the hemoglobin molecule, and it's actually the binding site for oxygen. So when your iron levels are low, your red blood cells have less hemoglobin, and they become more pale and underfilled, which literally changes the color of your blood. Let me show you what this looks like under the microscope. On the right, you can see healthy red blood cells. They're uniform in size, shape, and color. But on the left, these cells are iron deficient. And you can see that they look so much more pale, with a variety of different shapes, especially the classic pencil cell. But you don't have to look under a microscope to see the impact on your body. All you have to do is go to a mirror and gently pull down your lower eyelid. See that inner surface? That's called the conjunctiva, which is a thin membrane lining your eyelid. And be sure to focus on the area closest to the eyelashes. That's where the blood vessels are most visible. It should have a nice rich red or pink color, but if it looks pale or even white, that's a sign of anemia. And personally, I really like this test because it works no matter what your skin tone is. Another place I'll look for pallor is in the creases of your palm. So let's do a little palm reading. Okay, so you're gonna extend your hand out like this. And as you can see here, the creases of your palm should be darker than the rest of your skin. If they're really pale or hard to see, like the hand on the left side of this photo, then it could be a sign of anemia. But be cautious with this one, because if you have a darker skin tone, the creases on your palm may remain darker, even if you're anemic. But the effect of low hemoglobin goes far beyond looking pale. Hemoglobin's real job is to carry oxygen to every organ in your body. So when your iron levels are low and you can't make enough healthy red blood cells, your body struggles to deliver oxygen to where it's needed. And that's why even simple things like walking up some stairs or carrying groceries can leave you exhausted and even short of breath. Some people even notice their heart racing as their body tries to compensate by pumping blood around faster. Next, I want you to take a look at your fingernails from the side. And I want you to really make note of their shape. In some people with iron deficiency, their nails will become thin and concave, sort of like the inside of a spoon. This is called koilonychia, or spoon nails. Let me show you a real example. This is a 22-year-old woman who came to the doctor with fatigue and depression. On exam, they noticed a dramatic case of spoon nails, and blood tests confirmed severe iron deficiency anemia. It turned out she wasn't getting enough iron in her diet, and her symptoms improved when she started taking an iron supplement. Now, this was a pretty severe case, but it's not not always so obvious. It can be a bit more subtle. So here's a quick test you can try at home. Place a drop of water on the center of your nail. On a healthy nail, the water rolls right off because of the nail's natural upwards curve. But if it stays pooled in the middle of the nail, like a tiny spoon, that's a sign of koilonychia. And some experts think that balancing a tiny bead on your nail could be even more accurate. And it can make for a fun party trick. Now, here's a truly unusual sign. It's called pica, which is a craving to eat things that aren't food. The most common example in iron deficiency is pagophagia, a strong urge to chew ice. This is such a strong indicator that if I see a patient that's constantly refilling their cup with ice and chewing on it, I'm immediately thinking about checking their iron levels. Some other common cravings that people get are raw pasta, chalk, baby powder, or just good old dirt. On the show Freaky Eaters, they followed a 34-year-old woman who was eating up to two pounds of cornstarch per day. And on TLC, another woman was shown eating up to two pounds of rocks per day. Oh, and we can't forget the guy who slowly ate piece by piece an entire airplane. Bottom line, if you've developed some unusual cravings, especially for ice, it's worth checking your iron levels. All right, now take a look at the tongue on the left. Notice how it looks smooth and shiny, almost like it's been polished? Well, this is a condition called atrophic glossitis, where those natural bumps on the tongue called papillae will gradually disappear. But this isn't just cosmetic. 
because those papillae actually help with texture and taste. And patients will often describe a burning sensation and tell me that food just doesn't taste right. The tongue is often one of the first places that nutritional deficiencies show up because its surface relies on rapidly regenerating cells. Just by talking and eating, we're constantly wearing down the surface of our tongue and those cells need to be replaced. When your iron levels are low, your tongue can't keep up with normal repairs. And gradually, those papillae disappear, leaving your tongue smooth and shiny. Have you ever noticed that your urine turns red after eating beets? Well, beets are red because they contain a natural pigment called betanin. And when you eat beets, some of that betanin gets absorbed into your bloodstream. And if it passes through your body without getting broken down, it ends up in your urine, making it pink or red which is called beeturia. Although you might be surprised to learn that this only happens in about 10% of healthy people, as opposed to 80% of people with iron deficiency. That's because iron helps to break down betanin. So without enough iron, more of it will pass through your body unchanged. It's not a definitive test by any means, but it is an interesting clue. But in any case, unless you just ate a bushel of beets, Red urine is a serious red flag that you should never ignore. There are a lot of things that your urine can tell you about your health. I made a whole video about this, so I'll leave a link up here and in the description so you can check it out next. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this at least once, especially if you live in a cold climate like me. And if you haven't, I'm sure you can imagine how uncomfortable this must be. This is angular chylitis, and it's when the corners of your mouth become inflamed and sometimes even infected. So what does iron have to do with the corners of your mouth? Well, you might not have stopped to think about it, but the corners of your mouth are actually quite complex. It's a transition zone where the moist lining of your mouth meets the dry skin of your face. And that area has to be thin, stretchy, and strong. And just like we discussed with your tongue, without enough iron, your body struggles to repair that tissue. It weakens, cracks, and breaks down, even with normal movement. And this cycle of constant breakdown and impaired healing leads to painful inflammation. All right. Let's talk about infections. This is ringworm, a fungal infection linked to iron deficiency. It got its name because thousands of years ago, doctors took one look at this rash and thought, it must be worms. Now we know that's not true. It's actually tiny fungi called dermatophytes, which get in through the skin through little cracks and then spread outwards, which is what gives that characteristic ring shape. These are the same organisms that cause athlete's foot and they can show up pretty much anywhere on the skin. Normally, your immune system is really skilled at protecting you against fungal infections. But when you're deficient in iron, your immune cells don't work as well. They need iron to create the reactive oxygen species that kill fungi and other microbes. So you can think of it like your immune system's weapons are running low on ammo. And it's not just fungal infections. If you're iron deficient, you're also at an increased risk of bacterial infections both on the skin and in the lungs. Next, let's talk about restless leg syndrome. This is when you have a weird, irresistible urge to move your legs. And it usually shows up and is most annoying for people at night when they're trying to sleep. And now we know that iron plays a key role in this. Here's what I find fascinating. Even if your iron levels fall within a normal range, iron deficiency still might be causing your symptoms. And that's because iron is managed differently in the brain as it is from the rest of the body. People with low normal iron stores, something that wouldn't get flagged on your standard lab report, can still have symptoms driven by iron deficiency in the brain. And studies show that up to 60% of people with restless legs improve with iron supplements. So if this is something that you're struggling with and your iron stores are in the low normal range, then I'd really suggest you talk to your doctor about it. So clearly, iron plays a crucial role in how your brain functions, and it can even impact your mood. In fact, when I'm working someone up for depression, I always consider iron deficiency anemia. And one reason for that is that your brain needs iron to produce dopamine and serotonin, two key neurotransmitters involved in regulating emotion, motivation, and focus. In other words, iron isn't just about red blood cells and delivering oxygen. It's something your brain relies on every day to help you feel like yourself. Now, this one might surprise you. Iron deficiency can actually increase your risk of stroke. It's rare, and here's how it happens. In response to iron deficiency anemia, 
your body ramps up production of platelets, the tiny blood cells that help you form clots. Over time, this can lead to thrombocytosis, an abnormally high platelet count. And when there are too many platelets circulating, your blood becomes more prone to developing clots in the wrong places, including the arteries supplying your brain. And that's how iron deficiency anemia can set the stage for a stroke. There was even a case series published in Neurology where a number of young women had unexplained strokes. They had no other risk factors aside from severe iron deficiency and elevated platelet counts. While this is not common, it's another reason why it's so important not to ignore iron deficiency. Now, before I tell you about the blood tests for iron deficiency, there are a few more signs that are worth a quick mention, even if they don't get a full deep dive. Itchiness. I think this is an underrecognized symptom. Low iron can alter nerve sensitivity while also causing dry skin. And this can trigger chronic itch without a visible rash. Hair thinning can also be an early sign of iron deficiency. That's because your hair follicles are some of the most rapidly dividing cells in your body and they need iron to stay in the growth phase. And dark circles under the eyes. This is likely related to the skin becoming more pale, allowing you to see the veins under the skin more clearly. Although it's still debated in the literature, many patients find that their dark circles improve as their iron levels normalize. So if you think you may have some of the symptoms that we've been talking about, the good news is that iron deficiency is really straightforward to diagnose. The best initial blood test is ferritin, which reflects your total body iron stores. In other words, how much iron does your body have in reserve? If your ferritin is low, it's a really strong clue that you are iron deficient, even before anemia shows up. But here's where it gets a bit tricky. Ferritin levels can actually rise when there's inflammation, infection, or even cancer. So while low ferritin is really helpful, a normal or a high ferritin doesn't always rule out iron deficiency. That's why we often order an iron panel, because it gives us more detailed information about the storage and handling of iron in your body. And if you are diagnosed with iron deficiency, fortunately, we can easily correct this with supplements. Usually this is in a pill form, but I do often give IV iron, either in severe cases or in cases where people have poor absorption. And after making a diagnosis, the next question has to be why? Why is there iron deficiency? This question is key because searching for an underlying cause could save your life. Either there's increased demand, meaning your body needs more iron than usual, and the classic example is in pregnancy. Next, there could be decreased intake or absorption. So basically, the iron is not getting into your bloodstream. This is often seen with a poor diet or a restricted diet like vegetarian or vegan diets. Now, don't get me wrong, you can get all the iron you need from plants, but it's just harder. And that's largely because iron derived from meat sources are two to three times more efficiently absorbed by the body than plant-based iron, which you might find in lentils or tofu. Plus, many plant-based sources of iron also contain phytates, which block iron absorption. Aside from dietary intake, any condition that impacts absorption can also lead to iron deficiency. Most commonly, I think about celiac disease, Crohn's disease, or gastric bypass surgery. And finally, the third reason for iron deficiency is blood loss. Sometimes the cause is really obvious, like if you just had surgery or you have really heavy periods. What's even more concerning is when you can't actually see the source of bleeding. In those cases, I'm most concerned about an undiagnosed colon cancer that's slowly bleeding. And many times, iron deficiency is the only clue we get early on. And I actually see this relatively frequently in the hospital. And I've helped catch colon cancer early by sending those patients for a colonoscopy. And that's one way picking up signs of iron deficiency can actually save your life. Okay, so now I wanna give you some practical tips on how to boost your iron absorption. This is particularly important for plant-based sources of iron and for common oral iron supplements you might be taking. Vitamin C naturally boosts iron absorption. So have oranges, tomatoes, or bell peppers along with your iron-rich food. Space out calcium supplements or calcium-rich foods because that can impair iron absorption. Also avoid tea and coffee with your iron. The polyphenols and tannins can also block iron absorption. And as a bonus, consider cooking with a cast iron pan because a small amount of iron can actually leach out into your food, which can help boost your levels over time. So if you love learning about your body and what to watch out for, then check out this playlist, which is packed full of videos that are teaching you what your body is telling you about your health. Stay curious, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now.